CuriosityStream has thousands of documentary films and shows available on demand on any device. We're the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, the Disney Plus for the scientist in us. There sure are a lot of streaming services, aren't there? Curiosity Stream is the one you definitely need if you're the type to nature doc and chill, if you're an armchair astronaut, if you prefer physics to psychics, or perhaps you know a precocious paleontologist. Go to curiositystream.com to learn more and sign up today. Depression treatment isn't one size fits all. Deep TMS is a non invasive, clinically proven, FDA cleared option to treat depression, and each treatment takes just 20 minutes. Visit go.brainsway.com slash deep TMS to find a provider near you. That's go.brainsway.com slash D-E-E-P T-M-S. Maggie, and it's always a pleasure when we get to talk to one of our favorites, and that's Tony Khan. Of course, he's the founder, the co-owner, the president, and the CEO of All Elite Wrestling. I don't know if you can have any more titles there, Tony. Also, the executive vice president <laughs> of football administration technology for the Jacksonville Jaguars, co-owner Fulham FC. Also, great to have you in studio. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, thanks for having me. It's really great to be with you in person now, uh, and and first time I've been in the studio in person with you, even though we've done the show together <laughs> yeah. virtually. Yes. And we were just talking about how everyone at the radio station was so pumped about the show you did in Queens. I know that was a big thing on your calendar from your standpoint. How did it go? It went uh, incredibly well. It was a Grand Slam, uh, pun intended. That was yeah. the event, AW Grand Slam. It was a Grand Slam home run. Perfect. And uh, we had two great shows there. We did AEW Dynamite and AEW Rampage, and they were both huge successes for us. And really, uh, we set our all-time attendance record, and I've always wanted to come to New York, and it was great to be able to do it at Arthur Ashe Stadium, which is just such a great venue. You know, Tony, the the momentum that AEW has going right now, uh, the pressure to keep it going, because the momentum is off the charts. Everybody, I mean, they were, we were talking to you off the air. So many people from the fan here went to the event. It was a tremendous event at Arthur Ashe. But the momentum and the popularity that you have going – the pressure now to keep that momentum going forward here. <laughs> You're too kind. And thank you both for coming. And thank you, everybody here, for coming. It was really kind. And we had so many great fans at Arthur Ashe a couple weeks ago for AEW Grand Slam. And for people who don't know, we have two shows, Dynamite, uh, usually on Wednesday night, but it's going to be on Saturday night in the next couple weeks. And it's it's a, uh, unfortunate timing because we've just been on this great run. We mm. had six straight Wednesdays where we were the number one show on all of cable, uh, which is huge, Amazing. on all the programs on cable satellite. We're number one on Wednesday. But we're going to be on Saturday this week. We have a huge week coming up. Uh, we have Friday night Rampage, uh, 10 o'clock on TNT, and we have Saturday night Dynamite, uh, 8 o'clock Saturday night on TNT. And it's a huge weekend for us uh, coming off of that big Grand Slam event we did here. And you're both so kind to come, and the momentum is huge, and we signed some huge stars Uh CM Punk and Brian Danielson, who I understand was here, sitting yeah. here yeah. recently. Yeah, he was here, and it's great to see him back. The CM Punk being back, who's going to be wrestling on Friday, which is always super exciting. And then I think wrestling fans want to know who's the next big star that you're going to bring to the AEW roster. And I think a lot of diehard fans are wondering if Bray Wyatt is going to be that man. Well, I, I if certainly that name would never be because <laughs> that's not. Well, yes, yes, sorry, but, the, but, uh, the artist formerly known as. Right? He's a great wrestler, and uh, I got to be honest, we haven't really talked at all. Uh, I've known him in personal life, and I've I've gotten to spend a little bit of time with him. But as far as that, uh, we haven't talked, and I think I saw lots of rumors, but I that's not something anybody's really talked about. But I think you know, you never know. Okay. Uh, Tony, how about the impact of uh, Brian Danielson, the impact of CM Punk here on AEW? It's been amazing. And with the business lift we've seen in terms of every major business metric at All Out, we set our pay-per-view record last month with the biggest pay-per-view, not just that we've done, but that any independent wrestling company outside of the you know the, the big guy, uh, the WWF then the WWE, has done in the last uh, 23 years. I mean, since 1999, mm -hmm. since the 90s, was the last time anybody had gone out and in competition done that kind of pay-per-view. And what really made me very happy is it was the most critically acclaimed pay-per-view in a really long time. People really engaged with it and liked it. And I, I'm i so glad it clicked with people because so many people saw it. And then to do a show everyone really was happy with and was well-received meant a lot to me. And CM Punk and Brian Danielson have come to AEW 
and given us a huge lift because not only are they these really recognizable wrestlers that pretty much almost every fan knows CM Punk and Brian Danielson from all the years they've been on television to such a wide audience around the world, but also they're great wrestlers, yeah. and that's what AEW's about is great matches, and that's what this Friday night, getting to see CM Punk, you know, we're building up, and he's having all these great matches, testing himself against all kinds of different opponents, and on TNT Friday night, Matt Seidel is one of the best wow. bell-to-bell wrestlers. Wow. That's going to be a huge match live on Friday night. Punk versus Seidel and 10 o'clock uh, Friday night. We have so much exciting action on that Rampage show. And I, I'm going to announce here, I think live, this might be the first place it gets out anywhere, that uh, we're going to do a, what we normally do for a pay-per-view. You know how we do the pre-show, the buy-in? Yeah. Of course. Well, Rampage, it's a huge event on Friday night. So we're going to have a buy-in live on YouTube Friday night, live from the Knight Center, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. We'll go on live. And ahead of uh, their matches on Saturday night, I'm going to give a couple of tough tests to Brian Danielson, the aforementioned Brian Danielson who sat in this very seat, uh, maybe the best wrestler in the world. Uh, we'll, we'll see him in action Saturday night against Bobby Fish. And what a huge match that's going to be on Saturday night, Dynamite. But on Friday night, ahead of Rampage, we'll have – the buy-in ahead of the matches we have this huge card. We have Punk versus Seidel. We have Ruby Soho versus The Bunny, which is a huge match because both of them uh, are in line to be competing in the TBS title tournament that's mm -hmm. coming up. And uh, this match could have big implications on who's in, who's out, or where people are seated and who could make it in. Somebody could get injured before the tournament. It could be a big situation there. But also to have Jorge Masvidal, one of the biggest stars in MMA, coming and Junior Dos Santos, the former UFC heavyweight champion, getting in the AEW ring, bringing that UFC fight coming with Masvidal and teaming with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page against Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, an undefeated MMA fighter himself from Bellator. So it's UFC versus Bellator. It's AEW versus UFC. <laughs> and Sammy Guevara, the, T <laughs> the TNT champion, is coming. Sammy Guevara, the TNT champion, is going to be there as part of this trios match, too. That's all on Rampage. And ahead of Saturday night's Danielson uh, versus Fish on Friday night Rampage's pre-show buy-in on YouTube. Everybody in the world will get to see both Bobby Fish and Brian Danielson in singles matches. And I'm going to test both of them with great matches ahead of their match Saturday. And it's all on TNT plus the buy in on YouTube ahead wow, of awesome. the TNT show. So, Lewis, you got all that? I got all, all that. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> can you just say it back to me a couple times? I don't times? think I can repeat it all. It's going to be a huge wrestling weekend <laughs> for the fans. Awesome. I've been really <laughs> outward that I want this to be a great weekend for the fans. And I think there's going to be a lot of great wrestling this weekend. And I'm ready for AEW to stand up and say we have as good a wrestling as anybody on the planet, which we do right now. We're, we're hot as a firecracker. You mentioned CM Punk and Brian Danielson. Another really hot situation, we had this casino ladder match you might have seen on Dynamite. It did a, a huge rating, and it, it was a massive lift when this match got going, and as it went on, the rating kept going up and up. And, you know, well over a million people have watched Dynamite, I think, for about 10 straight weeks, and going uh, way over a million, and uh, consistent average. And now uh, we saw this big lift in the match, We've got this really young audience, and there's so many wrestlers in the match that clicked when you had Orange Cassidy and Pac out there. And then two great stars that have uh, crossover appeal with Matt Hardy and Andrade El Idolo come out. Lance Archer in the commercial break was cleaning house. And then John Moxley, the, huh. gr the biggest AEW of star of all maybe, was about to win it when Hangman Page came back to AEW. And I think the situation now with Hangman Page, his return, winning that great match, Hangman and Kenny... Uh, is as big a story, as big a situation as anything in AEW. And now there's, um, you know, a lot of questions of that. Well, Tony, I mean, I think this just underscores, right? The wrestling fan wanted something and you're giving it to them. And it's very obvious to see that the momentum is just going in this incredible direction. You said you're hot as a firecracker. And it's just crazy, though, because you juxtapose AEW. You guys are on this rocket ship, right? Up, up, up. And then what's going on with the Jacksonville Jaguars right now? Oh, Tony, 0 and 5 and it's been a really rough week for Urban Meyer and for the for the franchise. I mean, how are you feeling after this week? Uh, you know, I in many ways uh, you're really disappointed after you lose a game like that where you you uh miss an extra point and uh you know, the, the, a lot of things went that way, missed a field goal and then had a couple calls that didn't go our way and I personally thought the play in the first minute or so of the game was uh, an incomplete pass, and that was ruled a fumble, and that's seven points against you right there, and a lot of things against us, but the guys fought until the end, and uh, I, I think 
I took note of how hard the guys played, and I'm really excited about how hard the team's playing. We have a lot of really good young players. Uh, the offense, a lot of bright spots, and on defense, we have a lot of really good players. So I think uh, with such a young team, we still have a lot of upside and, and can win some games. How about with Urban, though? I mean, your father had to come out and give out the statement that he has to earn everyone's trust back. You know, the video, not flying back with the team from the, the loss in Cincinnati. You know, how, how difficult was that for you? Uh, it was, it's been a challenging time, I think, for the team in terms of uh, d- coming together and, and winning games is the thing everybody's trying to do. And I think that when that happened, uh, you know, everybody moved past it and tried to get into the game this week. And I know there was a really good focus and energy in the building because I was there. And uh, uh, even after the game, everyone really rallied together. And uh, nobody's in the locker room but us. And I think in the locker room, despite what I've seen people say, that I would say that uh, we have a very close team, and I've seen the team rally around each other, and we have great leadership. And I think Miles Jack said a lot of really good things after the game, not to call him out, but he's been a great player for us for a long time and a captain and a leader. And uh, I agreed with everything Miles Jack said after the game. So, Tony, all the all the stories about a fracturing in that clubhouse with Urban, uh, untrue? I haven't seen it. I mean, I'm there. I'm inside the locker room. I know I haven't seen that at all. So, I mean, I, I came here to talk about AEW and how we're the best wrestling company in the world right now. I wasn't yeah. expecting to talk about this, but I will say I was there in the locker room with everyone after the game. And, um, you know, nobody knows what Miles Jack said after the game, but I agreed with every word he said. Well, and we love talking to you about AEW, but you're an executive with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it really is one of the biggest stories. And we talked to you once on Zoom, and you guys were so thrilled about Urban Meyer. You loved that hire. I'm still thrilled about still Urban. Thrilled. I'm still okay. thrilled with Urban. I think he's a great coach. And, uh, you know, I can't. it's not my place. I'm the head of analytics and football strategy, and uh, I do things like look for undrafted players. So, like, I uh, – for example, like uh, week to week, I, lo- I bring in statistics, statistical observations on the opponents or ourselves uh, during the season. But then my main offseason focus is the draft. And I'm not the GM, so I'm not the person making the picks. But what I do do is uh, a lot of work in undrafted free agency because at that point you can go out and kind of as a, as a scout or in my case the head of statistics, you can go out and sign kind of anybody you want within a, a budget for the team. And I've gone out and signed a lot of really good players. I found James Robinson out of Illinois State, who's one oh, of the wow. great running back. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, and a uh, number of players in the secondary for us over what the years. Led you, what, because Robinson was a tremendous find last year. When you looked at him as a player, what led you analytically to to finding him and uncovering him? Well, he had great statistics and also great good measurables. And yeah. he's not like the world's fastest running back, but he's he's it's got really good, good speed and super productive. And at Illinois State, he was super productive, and they didn't have the most exposure on national TV or anything. But when you looked at his statistics, he was a hugely productive running back with great stats at Illinois State. No, and then uh, good workouts, and I thought he had a good chance, and he was undrafted, and that's what I look for is, is good players that slipped through the cracks. Corey Grant was a good player for us. He was a, a kick returner and also a good running back. He had a very good first half of the AFC Championship game. He didn't get the ball as much in the second half, but he was very effective. Uh, uh, he had three catches for 60 yards against the Patriots in the championship game and uh, in the first half. And, uh, you know, so I, I really uh, enjoy looking for the undrafted players. Trey yeah. Herndon's a guy in the secondary. I, I looked. So I, I love uh, football, but, uh, you know, and here in New York uh, on a wrestling uh, visit with you guys, you know, like you said, I'm just glad you both came to the show, and it's great to catch up well, with you after that. Yeah, Tony, I want to ask you, what about Lawrence? Uh, I mean, yeah. he is. We've looked at and looked at uh, the rookie quarterbacks this year. Lawrence going number one overall. We talked to you after the draft. And- I would definitely still take him again. Oh, no doubt. I, I no mean, doubt. do you well, watch the you watch the games? Does this not look like the best quarterback prospect? Oh no, no, he's fantastic. Oh no, no, no doubt, no doubt. I think Lawrence is going to be a great player. I'm oh, just yeah. saying your early impressions of Trevor and the leadership that he has shown. So years good, ago. Yeah. so good. He's the best. Yeah. No, I uh, like that's and and. There's so many reasons to be optimistic as a Jags fan. You know, we just talked about James Robinson, who's a really, yeah. really mm-hmm. effective running back. And then talking about our young quarterback, number one pick in the draft, who just everything about him is great. He's been tremendous in the games, the way he's developed. You couldn't ask for a better arc or a better person. And what a what a great guy. Uh, speaking of which, uh, you know, it was actually my birthday uh, oh. on Sunday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. We How wanted old to- are you? You're so you're I just died 39. Look 39. You. You're doing a lot. Thank Thank you. What are you going to do for the 40th? Tomorrow? Well, like, who knows? I, I, hopefully we're 40th. in a great position. Hopefully, all the, you know, everybody's doing well. And it was great after the game. Uh, to, you know, I've got to catch up with some friends. And uh, actually, uh, Adam Cole and Dr. Britt Baker were there. Uh, the, nice. the women's world champion of AEW. And uh, so the AEW champion, Britt Baker, and 
she did get to take a photo with uh, Trevor Lawrence, which is kind of cool. For, <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, and uh, that so t- is Trevor a big wrestling fan? Yeah, you, you know, a lot of guys on the team are. There's a bunch of people. We did the shows in Jacksonville for a really long time. Yeah. Miles mm-hmm. Jack, who I just talked about, has come to a bunch of the shows. He's a great person and loves wrestling. And uh, we have a great. Uh, fan base that we built in Jacksonville because for a long time that was the only place in America where you could go see a, a totally safe, by the way, outdoor wrestling show. I turned Jacksonville into almost like uh, a, a drive-in theater because all the outdoor seats yep. in the amphitheater, we basically put each section was like your own pod for a family or a group of friends. So people came, sat in the outdoor sections with masks. We had zero COVID transmissions through the whole year. We did it no and no, no real... Uh, this this entire time, no other place you could go in the country to watch wrestling on television with fans there or go literally live and see it. So the fans in Jacksonville were great, and also a lot of the players really got into the wrestling and saw some of their favorites, you know, and they got to meet even celebrities like Mike Tyson and Shaq and Snoop Dogg, who all were on these dynamites in Jacksonville. That's awesome. Uh, Tony, I got one more for you. Um, the competition. Saw a piece written this week about – Competition, AEW, WWE, Tony Khan, Vince McMahon, the true competition, What the momentum that AEW has built here. You mentioned about the amount of people that are watching on Wednesday nights, where you guys are, I, the buzz around AEW right now. We asked CM Punk about competition. He said it is, but it's not in kind of a way with the WWE. What about the competition and what you're providing the wrestling fan that they were not getting before. The most important thing is that AEW does the best shows. And if you watch the shows, we're, we built this audience from scratch. There yeah. was no AEW a no. couple years ago. Now AEW on TNT is the best show in many fans' eyes, and we're building and building this audience year over year. We're up double digits. Every month we're up year over year, and now we're up 30% over where we were a year ago, and there's a reason for that. I It's it's in some ways the worst timing. I have to say if one thing I say while I'm here is, We're off Wednesday for the next couple weeks, so we're on Friday and Saturday this weekend. So it's a big weekend for us because we need to make a statement. You know, unfortunately, we were doing such great numbers on Wednesday, so it's bad timing to have Dynamite move to the weekend. But we've built this great thing in Rampage, and we have Friday night Rampage on TNT at 10, and we have Saturday night Dynamite, Saturday night on TNT at 8, and... Right now, you know, we have all this momentum. Like I said, the number one show on all of cable and satellite TV, six straight Wednesdays. So it's bad timing to be moving off Wednesday when you're on such a great recent run. But but this weekend's huge for us, and the shows have been so good. It's not about competing with them. It's about doing our best show. So you've said before that you're further ahead than where you thought you would be two years, basically, into starting this thing and the pandemic and all that. Short-term goals. Obviously, you got Friday night, Saturday. We know that short-term goals that you have that you want to accomplish that maybe were a little bit different before? I would like to continue having chances for both Dynamite and Rampage to be the number one show on cable on their night. So Dynamite has been number one many times on Wednesday night. This week it's on Saturday. But when I want to do great numbers on Saturday this week, and I want to do great numbers on TNT on Wednesdays and keep that number one spot. Also, Rampage has finished at number one multiple times. And, you know, we've finished number two, three all over. And the sports competition has been really tough on Friday nights. Yeah. But I want the fans to know it's big event this week live. You know, who knows what's going to happen with these huge matches and the top are stars. Ri- are you writing now more of the storylines? I write I, every, yeah, yeah. I, I have been. You uh, took that more on your shoulders as opposed to when you first started, right? Well, yeah, that's. I saw that came out recently, and it was a little bit. The only th- it's true that I am booking and writing everything by hand, but the the fact is, I work with each kind of program. I'm very hands on, but I also am great at working with people. I just work with a ton of people, so that means you know having personal relationships with maybe a hundred or more people in the company. But that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And in the pandemic, you know, you've learned how to keep in contact yeah. virtually more than ever. It's allowed me to get my hands around it. But even before the pandemic, really before that, it was at the beginning of 2020, really at the end of 2019, I I told myself going into the new year, I'm just going to do everything by hand. I, because at first you didn't, coming in, I was timing everything and I would keep track of times and I worked with them. We had a great group of people. I still do have a great group of people, but I just needed to probably take more ownership of what I was doing because, um, you know, at the end of the day, there were, there were a lot of cooks in yeah. in one show and it's just hard because i still want to get everyone's ideas but you have to organize everything into one show and that's why i still love working with everyone but i i just 
thought it was a little misleading because somebody just reported that recently, but it's really been that way since the, about 2020, and, and things got really hot around then, too, so I think it's been good for our business because I'm very organized and meticulous about how AEW structured, what matches go on, and I make sure we have a lot of time for the wrestling and have yeah. great matches. Tony, well, can't tell Tony you how much we appreciate this. Thanks for coming in, studio. The founder, co-owner, president, CEO, the writer, the director, the everything of all elite wrestling. Tony, thanks for the time. Good luck. Thank you both. It's great to see you. Great, great to, to see, see you, you as too. well. Uh, we're late to the update. Andrew Bogish is in the studio as well. Slick back hair and all. For Look the first that. time in like two like years. That. So Bogish has got the update. We're back on the other side. Don't move. There's a lot of streaming services out there, each filled with reality TV, comedy, drama, and of course, superheroes. But there's one dedicated entirely to nonfiction TV and documentary films, and that's Curiosity Stream. History, science, nature, we've got it. Space, dinosaurs, big cats, we've got that too. And pretty much anything else you want to explore. Go ahead, add some smart TV to your smart TV with Curiosity Stream. Go to curiositystream.com to sign up and start streaming today. Keeping up with the flood of news every single day can be quite stressful. There is climate change happening. There's the pandemic, labor movements, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend. Hi, I am Gideon Resnick, host of Crooked Media's What A Day. Each week, Travel Anderson, Priyanka Arabindi, Josie Duffy, Rice, and I are going to break down the biggest news stories of the day in a way that hopefully doesn't always make you want to cry. New episodes of What A Day drop every weekday at 5 a.m. Eastern. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You live in a smart home powered by Cox Internet, so you're not thinking about the pizza delivery. You're thinking how nice it is to get everyone together for a fun night. You're not thinking about the pizza. Maybe just a little. Cox Home Life. Show me the front porch camera. Pizza! View your Cox Home Life cameras right from your TV using your Contour voice remote. Visit cox.com slash this is home to learn more. Advertised features require subscription to Cox Internet and Contour TV. A high-speed internet connection is required. Home Life Security Services subject to Home Life Security Service Agreement. Cox Home Life Services provided by Cox Licensed Entities. See cox.com slash licenses.